Good morning. And good morning to those of you who are actually physically in the building. There's very few of us this morning. So uh, good morning to all of you who have joined us online this morning. Uh, as we uh, continue, and this is our second Sunday of Advent this morning, my name is Pastor Loretta, and i uh, just let you, like to let you know that Pastor Aaron is on parental leave, and Elijah was born on December 2nd. So we are all very pleased for uh, Aaron and April and Ethan, and um, so hopefully later on today, like at noon after the service, we'll do a Zoom meetup as, again, and then Aaron is hoping to show off baby Elijah at that time. So we will see if that's going to actually happen. Um, this morning, I'd like to welcome Pastor Ron, uh, as he will be bringing the message to us a little bit later in the service. And we also have a treat this morning, too. Behind me is Dennis and Ryan. It's a grandfather and granddaughter team. And they have helped us in our music before, but they have not led music as uh, a team. So that's a treat for us this morning. So welcome. Um, Advent. As our second Sunday of Advent, Advent, we are reminded, is our season of waiting and longing. And this year, many of us are experiencing this waiting and longing in a way that we haven't done before. And uh, I was thinking this week that this sense of waiting and longing uh, that we have for this pandemic to be over if as we use this sense of waiting and long, longing to help us to remember what it is we ultimately wait and long for, the coming of Jesus Christ, and knowing that only when Jesus comes and makes things new again, when he comes back again, that all our longings for wholeness and peace and love will be completely fulfilled. And as we wait this Advent, experiencing various fears and losses and grief this morning in different ways. And yet as we wait, we still continue to seek to follow where Christ leads us. And this morning, God says to us and welcomes us with these words from Joshua, that he said to Joshua millennia ago, millennia ago, be strong and contagious, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And it's with these words that you are welcome to worship this morning, wherever you happen to physically be. God unites us in spirit and in truth. So let us sing the children's song, A Love Tree. It's not a song that I knew before, but it is a great song about the fruit of the spirit. A love tree, a love tree, I want to be a love tree. Fruit of the Spirit growing in me. A love tree, a love tree, I want to be a love tree. Above the Spirit growing in me. Help me count the fruit on my love tree. Love, joy, peace are one. Goodness, self, and me. Goodness, self-control, and humility. A love tree, a love tree. I want to be a love tree. Fruit of the Spirit growing in me. A love tree, a love tree. I want to be a love tree. Love of the Spirit growing in me. And it's growing, 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 growing. A love tree, a love tree, I want to be a love tree. Fruit of the Spirit growing in me. A love tree, a love tree, I want to be a love tree. Love of the Spirit growing in me. Love of the Spirit growing, growing, growing in me. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Dennis and Ryan. And uh, Erin in the background there. Erin sang this song first time when she was seven years old, and we heard it on tape this morning, those of us who were here setting up this morning. So that was kind of fun. So our memory verse, Psalm 23. Now Miranda and Sherry aren't with us this morning, so I'm going to try to do the actions with one hand since I'm holding a mic. So let us do it with the words first. If, uh, yeah, so the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. So let's see if we can do this without the words. I do have a cheat sheet here just in case, though. (laughs) It's interesting how what the version we learned way back keeps coming back. So, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Great. And next Sunday, we will add the very last verse. I'm going to ask Dennis and Ryan to do the candle lighting now. Last Sunday, we lit the candle of hope and were reminded to put our hope in God's promises of a peaceful kingdom. On this second Sunday of Advent, we light the candle of love. Our God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16 We light this candle to remember God's love, love which drives out all fear, which brings joy to the world and peace on earth. Now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God come one day every tongue will confess you are God one day every knee will bow still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now come now is the time to worship time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Come, 
One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Willingly we choose to surrender our lives. Willingly our knees will bow. With all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, we gladly Is the time to give your heart come just as you are to worship come just as you are before your God come Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you were raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no evil. Nor and forever, God. 
God you reign Yours is the kingdom Yours is the glory Yours is the name above all names What a wonderful name it is Christ my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. You have no rival. You have no equal. Yours is forever God you reign yours is the king yours is the glory yours is the name above all names what a powerful name it is what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my king what a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Jesus' name is powerful, more powerful than any kind of pandemic or anything that is happening in our lives today. Um, I just want to take, before we do announcements, I just want to take a minute to just talk about the Advent path, the Jesse path that we have in front of us. Now, most of you hopefully are aware of what this is at this point, but just in case, uh, so the rocks here... Underneath each of the rocks is a little circle, and each of those circles represents a story from the Old Testament. So the idea is that this tells the story of God's plan right from the beginning of time. And this is the creation of the world, and that's what Pastor Ron's going to talk about today. And then we go through all the different things that have happened um, and lots and lots of ups and downs, people like uh, Sarah and Abraham and Joseph and Moses and the Israelites. And they had lots of hard times, but God was with them the whole time, working all the time to bring about his promises of Jesus coming. And so we go all through this till we get to finally Christmas Day when we celebrate the coming of Jesus as a little baby. And you will see here, and John, I think that you've got the uh, nativity scene here in the camera. You'll notice that the manger is still empty, right? Last week, we just had the little lamb. To, uh, to this week, I put in Mary and Joseph. So there's a little bit more happening. But as we go through this Advent season, um, we, uh, each day... We can look at each, most of the children of Avenue Church have all of these circles. And each day you can go through and talk about what story represents that circle for that day and go all the way till Christmas time. Now, if you are listening and you didn't receive a whole packet of these little circles and would like to receive one, uh, you're welcome to contact me, Pastor Loretta. You just go on our Avenue website, and my information is on there. And you're welcome to do that. So there's just a few announcements this morning. So uh, I'm not going to say all of them, because there's quite a few. So I'm going to ask you to go to your newsletters, um, which you would have received in your emails, and uh, read through all of them about the various services that are coming up this Christmas um, and what's happening over the services. 
I will say that this coming week is once again an all ages service. It's a, a week early because of the Christmas, all the different things we're doing for Christmas. Uh, and uh, one of the things that we want to talk about a little bit more is the fact that we are all struggling in some way this Christmas in particular. And uh, so there is some information on the uh, newsletter about that as well, and I encourage you to read that. And if you are struggling, I encourage you to reach out, because the fact is, is that, and I, you know, I thought about whether I should say this, and I thought, you know what, we all struggle. And the fact is, is that I myself, in the past, have spent quite a number of different times going to counselor for various reasons, and. Um, I've also struggled with depression and uh, medication for depression and so on uh, as well. So our mental health is an important thing that we need to care for as well as our physical health. And uh, even today, every month, faithfully, I connect with a spiritual director. Because to maintain our mental, emotional, spiritual health is so important. Um, if we also seek to follow Christ and when things are difficult, uh, God is still with us. But often, it helps to have other people come around us to help us see that when we cannot do that. I have a friend once who, uh, her daughter died in a fire, and she couldn't pray. She couldn't do anything anymore. So what she did is she just called me, and she would say, Loretta, can you pray the Lord's Prayer? Because I just... I can't even pray that anymore. So I would do it with her and for her at that time. So if you are struggling in any way, I really encourage you to reach out. Um, reach out to somebody you know. Reach out to different people. You're welcome to contact me, whatever it is. Uh, we also have an opportunity to support St. Face. We uh, now gather building. And uh, so St. Face is our closest partner in ministry at the moment. And so we have a couple of opportunities to, uh, to participate and help with ministry. One of them is to donate in different ways. And I encourage you to go online to your newsletter. Um, there'll be a separate uh, email about that. So take a look. Uh, and then the other one is uh, a Christmas meal, takeout meal that we are serving on December 18th. Now, it's hard for a lot of people to volunteer because it's during the day on the, on the 18th, but if you are able to volunteer at all, please contact me, and uh, we will gather together a number, of, uh, a number of us as well as some other volunteers and uh, serve the community around here this Christmas as well. Uh, and then don't forget, after the service, we are going to do a Zoom meet which will be on your newsletter as well, the link for that as well. So I encourage you to do that. Uh, I am going to hand it over to Pastor Ron, who is going to pray with us this morning. Thank you, Pastor Loretta. I'm going to lead you in a time of prayer, community prayers. Um, I'm not sure if anyone in the room has a specific prayer request that I can add. Yes? Um, I actually have three. Uh, one is um, well, very often grateful to um, have another grandson. So, um, Elijah, Dave, and Al. Okay, 
Thank you. And that, that's Jake? Is that Jake? Okay. Could you repeat that for the people online? Because they haven't heard any of that. Yeah, so prayers, of course, uh, thanksgiving for the birth of Elijah. Uh, Jaden to uh, Pastor Aaron in April. Um, thanks for caregivers provided um, for Ben. And, uh, and then also um, the awareness that Jake's brother is expected to pass away Ben's soon. Ben's Jake. Pardon me? Ben's brother Jake. Yes, Ben. Okay, anything else? Okay, let me lead you in a prayer. God, we give you thanks in this time that you are a God who cares and upholds and preserves his creation, a God who um, cares for our needs. And we pray that we would hold on to that in times that um, want us to lose sight of that. God, we've heard already, um, and we pray for those wrestling with um, the way that this time exacerbates um, mental health, the way it exacerbates things like anxiety and fear and loneliness and even depression. And so... We thank you that we can hear of the way that uh, a caregiver has been found to provide support for, um, for Ben and his family. But we also want to remember all those who are in the caregiving profession. This time has put a strain on a great many number of people, and we want to remember them. And so in this time, we pray that we would have the grace and the awareness to reach out in care and to be mindful of the needs of people around us. We pray, Lord, that we would also be able to practice your presence and your peace and to know deeply and profoundly that somehow in all of this, you are with us. And so, God, we pray that you would be with us in this way. We pray that we would be able to practice and be aware of your presence. God, we want to um, remember all those who are in what we call the front lines. Paramedics, doctors, nurses, firefighters, staff in hospitals, and so on. We want to... Um, Remember them and offer them to you. And we know that they are under heavy strain. We pray that truth would prevail in our culture as we hear people denying the reality of what is going on. We pray for our governments. We pray for wisdom as they might as they have to make critical decisions as to how to respond and so god in this time we pray that um you would hear our prayers but somehow that we would know that you are present and active in this time we want to give you thanks this morning especially for the birth of elijah to aaron in april and we give you thanks we pray for all of our families. We pray for our children. We pray for parents. We pray for wisdom and grace in our families as we learn how to raise our children, as our children deal with different things. And um, so we just pray and offer to you um, our families. We pray for our relationships. Um, with siblings, with parents, with children. And we pray that where there needs to be reconciliation and healing, that you would grant that to us. We pray now for this time as we open your word, as we open your scripture. 
We pray for open hearts, for open minds. We pray for change to happen by the power of your Spirit, even in this time. And we pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, I, um, I feel like I'm breaking a, a, a few rules, Advent rules, um, preaching from Genesis. But I was happy when uh, Loretta, Pastor Loretta, sent me the possible things that I could preach on from the Jesse path that um, there was something there on the creation because something's been on my heart for a while. I also feel like I'm maybe breaking a rule because I'm jumping ahead and reading from the birth narrative in the Gospel of Luke, and that's kind of like jumping ahead to hear the nativity scene. But um, anyways, we're just going to sort of bend the rules a little bit. Um, I was Technically, I became retired uh, from ministry, pastoral ministry, a, a little while ago, so maybe it's okay for a retired person to break the rules. So anyways, um, we're going to read um, actually four scriptures and uh, just a few verses from four spots in the scripture. And we, we're going to begin with Genesis 1. Genesis 1 to 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty, Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And then we'll read from Luke chapter 2, and we're going to just pick out just a very brief uh, couple of verses from that account. While they were there, that is Joseph and Mary, the, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And then we'll skip over to Colossians. Colossians uh, 1, verse 15 to 17. The Son of God is the, image of the is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And then finally, and I, I'm not sure, you probably won't have this on the screen, but I want to read from Revelation 21, just a verse there, and um, just the one verse, chapter 21, 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. Well, on a very cold night in December 2009, he was shipped out of the Devur Kralovi Zoo. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. He was shipped out of the Devur Kralovi Zoo in eastern Czechoslovakia. His journey, along with three others, would take him across continents to the old Pajeta Conservatory in Kenya, thousands of miles to the south. He was returning home to the place of his birth, to the wild, dusty plains from which he had been taken when he was only two years old. His trip was meant to be a rescue mission for his species. But the picture in the October 2019 National Geographic shows him breathing his last breath. He's lying on the ground with his thick knees curled beneath him. 
His great body with its gray leathery skin is sloped to the side, and his huge snout is resting in the dirt with its double horns, and his eyes look dark and sad as if he knows what is happening. A man is with him in the photo. His name is Joseph, Joseph Wakira, and the two, man and animal, press their heads together as if communicating their goodbye. It's a terribly haunting image for what's happening in the picture is the death of the last male northern white rhino. There are now no more of them, not one. There is now only emptiness and a great dark void where they once roamed the grasses of Africa in the hundreds of thousands. When I look at that picture, it's, it's hard to feel what really needs to be felt. And I think, you know, maybe I should take that picture away with me, take it, take it away somewhere, go, where, go away somewhere quiet, somewhere um, silent, go away with this picture of this dying animal and his caretaker, sit in the silence and ask God to help me to feel the sorrow, and the immense sadness of such a grotesque tragedy, the death of Sudan, the last and final male northern white rhinoceros on planet Earth. How grievously far we have come from the wonder and the delight, the exuberance of those first creation days where God speaks the world into being, where God is calling out, let there be this and let there be that, and seahorses and sea lions and squirrels and sparrows and northern black rhinos and southern black rhinos and javan rhinos and Sumatran rhinos and the greater one-horned rhinos, rhinos all all find their life and their exuberance and their vitality by the word of God's mouth and the delight of his heart. It's a world that God treasures, a world that reflects the wonder and the beauty and the delight of God himself, a world that is the self-revelation of God. A world to which God says again and again in that creation story, this is good, this is good, this is so very, very, very good. A world that looks to God for its food and care. A world of which it is said, God is loving toward all he has made. A world that is first of all and above all else, the creation of God. Which means that above all else, Sudan the northern white rhino was not a subspecies of rhino, nor an essential piece of an environmental ecosystem, but he was first of all a beloved creature of his creator. And it was not Sudan who died that day only, but something of God's own heart. Well, in the gospel story, we are told that Mary wraps Jesus in swaddling clothes and then lays him in a manger. She lays him in a manger, which is a feeding trough for animals, most probably in a room in a home that was reserved for the family's livestock. And it's because of the mention of the manger that animals appear in the Christian interpretation of the uh, birth of Jesus. 
going back to the very earliest Christians, it was understood that Jesus was born among animals and that animals came to worship too. St. Ambrose, for example, who lived in the late 300s and had a great influence on St. Augustine, which means he had an influence on all of us, stands already at the end of the 300s, stands in already a long history when he refers to the prophet Isaiah in his interpretation of Luke's account of Jesus' birth. And he quotes uh, the prophet Isaiah, the ox knows its master, and the donkey its owner's manger. Jesus was born among animals, says Ambrose, and it's a fascinating and wonderful perspective. For with that perspective, Jesus is not only the savior of humankind, he is also the owner and the master, the source and the Lord and savior of animal kind. This image of Jesus born among the creatures comes to full expression in Paul's letter to the Colossians. In that letter, in those verses that we've read, Paul is speaking about the supremacy of Jesus the Christ. The son who was born in an animal's feeding trough, that son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and things on earth, visible and invisible. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Jesus is proclaimed and declared the Lord of creation, and it's his word that brings the world and all of its wondrous creatures into being. And Isaiah's ox and donkey know their creator and look to their creator for life. It's a classic Old Testament image where the creatures of God's earth know from where their life and food come. You know, in my own Christian experience, I've heard a great deal about how, you know, God's final creation, human beings, you know, how human beings stand at the pinnacle of the creation story. You know, we are the supreme creature, and we stand apart, and we even stand above the rest of creation. But there's also a tradition, and we see it, for example, most clearly in Psalm 104, there's also a tradition that sees human beings as just one other creature among the many creatures. I was reminded this week of the Franciscan tradition. Its founder, St. Francis of Assisi, is the patron saint of animals. And in artwork, he's often depicted surrounded by birds and creatures of various kinds. And he talks about the animals as brothers and sisters because he knows that, you know, we all come from the same source. The child born in the animal trough, the child who we look to, who we wait for, who we worship, that child we share with the animals. All the creatures of God's creation come from this one source and we all together look to him for our livelihood and sustenance. We all worship the Christ of creation together. I grew up singing a hymn, is actually written by Francis of Sisi. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice with us and sing. And so we worship and we wait with the sights and the smells and the sounds of a cow barn. And the manger reminds us that we worship and wait for the Lord of the animals. So let's go back to the beginning again. Those uh, few verses at the beginning of Genesis. Those few verses capture the entire gospel story. First, there is God the creator, the main actor. The heavens and the earth are his creation. The world of plants and animals is not First of all, you know, the environment, nor is it an ecosystem. It's not even nature. 
The world of plants and animals are the creation of God, profoundly theocentric and theological. Sudan, above all else, however else you want to identify him, above all else, he belonged to the Creator. Second, we have the formlessness and the emptiness and the darkness of the pre-creation, what I will call non-world. The Hebrew words that are translated here, tohu vabohu, these words carry the idea of formlessness and shapelessness and senselessness and confusion. Some have called it the pre-creation chaos. It's everything that is not life everything that's contrary to life, everything that is a threat to the peace and the goodness and the harmony and the togetherness that the Lord of creation wants for his world. And so there is the creator, and there is the chaos, and then there is the hovering spirit, the hovering spirit of God over this darkness. The spirit is a sign of hope for the chaos, even the darkness and the chaos are not left alone, but the Spirit is there hovering. It's like you could say the chaos is waiting, waiting for a world to be born, waiting for the Creator to act, waiting for the Creator to speak. Let there be light. Let there be wonder and beauty and delight. And I suggest to you that this scenario is getting played out today in our world in many different ways. God the creator in love with his creation. God the creator who treasures the creation in his heart. God the creator who delights in his creation, who tends and cares for his creation. And then there is the chaos. The chaos of Humans hunting northern white rhinoceroses to extinction. The chaos of coal mines polluting river systems and poisoning multitudes of fish to death. The chaos of abandoned mines all across Canada leaving behind mountains of arsenic. Enough arsenic to, to poison the entire human population in Canada. If you think that COVID-19 is a problem, you might want to research arsenic. And so it is today, still today, that the chaos needs a word from the Lord. We're told in Romans that the whole creation is groaning for redemption. The animals and the rivers and the oceans are crying out. The creation is in crisis, waiting for the Savior of creation waiting for the hovering spirit and those words, let there be light and let there be new life. And we are waiting too, waiting for the Lord of creation to speak those words into our hearts and create in us the same mind that is in Christ Jesus. We're waiting for the same heart of love and delight of God to be born within us so that we might share in the heart of the Creator and His love and delight in His creation. We're waiting for the same willingness and ability to protect and to preserve and to feed the creation. We're waiting for our own chaos of apathy and misunderstanding and wastefulness and greed and selfishness to be reformed and recreated into the creation care of the Lord and Master of the animals. This Jesus born in this animal's trough, make no mistake, is the savior of creation. There are now in the world only two remaining northern white rhinos. They are both females related to Sudan. Fatu and Najin are their names. 
Sadly, both were unable to get pregnant by natural means with once living males. And now the only hope of preserving in any way the northern white rhino is through in vitro fertilization, taking eggs harvested from Fatu and Najin and fertilizing them with preserved male sperm. In one of the videos that I watched, the caretakers, the protectors of those last two living northern white rhinos, talk about their work as a calling and a vocation. It's quite powerful to listen to their testimonies. They talk about their work of protecting these animals as their calling and vocation. The men are Christians and they begin each day, their days, by reading the Bible and with prayer. And they pray that God would protect and preserve his creatures. And then they go out and do the same, watching the animals for 24 hours a day. And that's the way that they are waiting. Jesus, born in a manger, is the Savior of creation, the Lord and Master of the animals. He is the Lord who loved Sudan, the Lord who put Sudan on the, on the plains of Africa in order to flourish and thrive. Would that his dream be born in our hearts this season. Let me lead you in a prayer. Lord, we grieve the death of Sudan. And we are troubled by the chaos that we see and experience, much of it coming by human hands. Come, Lord, and be born in our hearts today so that we might share in your love, in your care, in your concern, and your provision for your creation. Come, Lord Jesus, we pray. And remake and renew our chaos into ways that allow flourishing, and thriving for all of God's creatures. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. desire Jesus precious lamb who ransomed me for upon his thorns his blood he set me free I desire Jesus, oh, his name my soul esteem. For upon his thorn scarred brow is the crown of victory. He is worthy of all honor. 
glory to his name. He alone deserves our highest praise, and forever he will reign. I desire us triumphant one the earth awaits on a day the earth will shine in the glory of your name you are worthy of all honor all glory I know for the Bible tells me so little ones to him belong they are weak but he is strong yes loves me yes Jesus loves me yes Jesus loves me the Bible tells me so desire Jesus precious lamb ransom me and unto you an offering will my life forever be
Well, I want to thank you all for being here and for all of those who have joined us online. I'm going to ask you to stand to receive God's blessing, and then we're going to sing the doxology. Yes? Yeah? Is that what we're going to? Okay. Open your hearts uh, to receive these words as God's blessing for you. May the God of all creation, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, keep you, shine upon you, and have you share in his heart for all of his creatures. And all the people of God say, Amen. Thank you. Praise.